Welcome back to Ubad's lab and today we're going to be making copper salicylate. So I got the idea and all the information that I need for the synthesis from this research paper called The Preparation of Analytically Pure Monobasic Copper Salicylate by Daniel Satriana in uh, 1971. And basically this paper goes through uh, everything that I need to know about the procedure of making copper salicylate and also goes into some of the physical uh, analysis of copper salicylate which is pretty interesting. Um, and it gives us two methods to make uh, copper salicylate, one being reacting uh, copper carbonate and salicylic acid in a 1 to 2.2 molar ratio. And then the other method is reacting copper hydroxide and salicylic acid in a 1 to 1 molar ratio. But the second method has a way lower yield, so we're going to be using the first method. And then it also gives us three possible uh, uh, formulas for the structure of this uh, copper salt. And then it goes into some uh, further analysis on the physical properties of this copper salt. So it does things like infrared analysis, x-ray analysis, and thermogravimetric analysis, which is all kind of interesting. And uh, I'll have the link to this paper in the description if you guys want to look over it. All right, so the equipment for this experiment includes uh, 1.96 grams of copper carbonate. I actually made this in one of my previous videos. So if you're interested in seeing how to make that, the link to that video will be down in the description. And uh, 2.5 grams of salicylic acid and 100 milliliters of distilled water. This should be preferably warm. All right, so I've got my very small beaker out because we're doing this reaction at such a small scale because I don't have that much copper carbonate to spare. Um, so I got 100 milliliters of distilled water in my beaker and I just warmed it up a bit in the microwave. And uh, let me show you my uh, copper carbonate that I'm gonna be using and my salicylic acid. I weighed them out to get them at the right ratio. And I'm gonna start by adding the copper carbonate to the beaker now. Seems like there's a little bit left. There we go. All right, all the copper carbonate has been added to the flask. I'm gonna mix it around a bit. Make sure all of it does dissolves. If I had a magnetic stir rod, this would be a lot easier, but I've just got this uh, glass stir rod. Okay, so I added 100 milliliters of some warm distilled water, and then my uh, copper carbonate, and then the salicylic acid all into the beaker. And now I'm mixing it around a bit, and uh, waiting for the uh, copper salicylate to start to precipitate. I'm not sure what color it is. I've seen one picture of it being green, so I'm not uh, completely sure. Um, and uh, I'm gonna let this reaction sit for a bit and meet back with you guys uh, to do the filtration process. All right, so I let the reaction sit for around uh, 10 minutes. And now I'm gonna run it through some filter paper uh, we can see that the solution has turned a bit green, so we definitely got some uh, copper salicylate that has formed. But what I'm starting to suspect is that we have some um, excess uh, salicylic acid. Maybe I didn't weigh too exactly, I'm not sure. But uh, we'll see after we filter it out and uh, see what our course of action should be.
I'm all right. So, this is probably all just excess salicylic acid that I'm putting into it right now. But I'm just throwing it onto the filter paper in case. All right. And I'm gonna let this filter out for a bit. All right, so the solution is basically done filtering, but the liquid at the bottom is a nice light green, which should be the color of copper salicylate. And then the uh, solid that we got at the top is a white powder. So it's probably some uh, unreacted salicylic acid and the copper salicylate is probably still in the liquid. So what I think I'm gonna do is uh, transfer the liquid to another beaker and then boil off all of the excess water and hopefully get some uh, copper salicylate crystals. Oh yeah, that's a nice light green right there. And I'm going to throw this on the hot plate and uh, heat it up a bit. So as I was boiling my uh, copper salicylate solution, I was just on my phone waiting for it to uh, precipitate and then the beaker just knocks over somehow and uh, all the solution spilled. Um, some of it did go on the beaker on the uh, hot plate though and get boiled on that. So we can see some uh, copper salicylate crystals on the hot plate. So this experiment wasn't a complete fail. Don't forget to join my Discord because it's a fun, tight-knit community and we discuss some of the topics I cover in my videos. The link to that will be down in the description. Uh, anyways, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.